I'm very happy to welcome you to the next session here. Our first speaker here in this session is Joshua Dunfield, and he's, tell, and he's going to tell us about elaborating intersection union types. Please. Thank you. So most of us like type systems, but they're difficult to design and they're difficult to implement. So with each new type system feature, you have to get the meta theory right and implement it possibly in the context of an already complex compiler. So what I try to do here is use intersection and union types as a target to encode various type system features and then get rid of the intersection and union types by elaborating them into a completely ordinary type system. And my real motivation is that I like intersection types. So for example, you can encode operator overloading using intersection. So an overloaded plus operator is the intersection of plus on ints and plus on reals. To do this, you need intersections and unions and a merge construct, which I'll get to in a minute. Then we're going to turn intersections into simple product types and unions into sum types. I only have 20 minutes, so I'm not going to talk about union types here, but you can see the paper. So what is an intersection? Well, it's something conjunctive, like set intersection. If we say that B has type A intersect B, we're saying it has type A and type B. So the introduction rule says that if B has type A1 and type A2, then it has the intersection. In the elimination rule, if you know that E has an intersection type, then you know that it has either one of those types. So the K here is existential. Unlike a lot of previous work that I and other people have done, we can form the intersection of arbitrary types even if they have no particular relation to each other. So if it's something conjunctive, is it just conjunction? Well, this seems unlikely because we know the product types correspond via curry howard to conjunction. And intersection is not really a product type. So product is something that has multiple witnesses. You get to give one witness for A1 and another one for A2. Intersection has only one witness, so you need to give one term that has both type A1 and type A2. In the elimination, you have to explicitly project out of a product, but you don't explicitly project out of the intersection. So you have the same term E in both the premise and conclusion. And it's really not a product type because not all intersections of inhabited types are inhabited. So there is no V that is both an integer and a function. But of course, all products are inhabited. You can just form the pair of, say, zero and a function. But we're going to make all your sections inhabited by having a merge construct. So this is kind of a funny thing. It's E1 merge E2. And to give it a type A, you only have to check the type of one of the parts of the merge. So for some k, you check that E sub k is type A, and then the whole merge has type A. And now we can indeed construct an intersection of an integer and function by writing a merge then using the intersection introduction rule. <coughs> On the left-hand side, we need to show that the merge has type int. So we pick out the first part of the merge, zero. And to show this type int arrow int, we pick out the second part of the merge. Note the order here does not matter. I could have swapped the merge around. Also, this is not an introduction form for intersection. In fact, it's not introduction form for anything because I don't mention any type connective in this rule. This is an unsafe generalization, as we'll see later, of the merge construct in Reynolds Forsyth. So, going back to products for a second, we saw that product is something where the introduction form has multiple witnesses. 
In the intersection introduction, we still have only one witness, but since we have the merge, we can put two terms into it. So what we're going to do is, assuming we've encoded various things as intersections and unions, we're going to get rid of them by turning them into products and sums. So this type in the source program int intersect int orient will become int product int orient. This seems to be part of the folklore for at least 20 years. But as far as I know, no one's ever actually worked it out. So now the implicit elimination of the intersection is going to turn into an explicit elimination of the product. We're going to elaborate the E into a projection out of the elaborate term then. So as usual, the main point here is the diagram will commute. Um, we have some source program E of type A in a language with intersections and unions. We're going to elaborate that into a target term M in a completely ordinary language, just has products and sums. Then you can do a standard evaluation of that target program and get something that corresponds to the elaboration to one of the ways in which you could have evaluated the source program. The source semantics is highly non-deterministic and quite strange, as we'll see. It's not much interesting on this slide, except we have this funny merge construct. And now the dynamic semantics, so the swoopy arrow here is meant to suggest that something funny is going on. The semantics starts out quite ordinarily. We do left-right evaluation of function application, beta reduction, and fixed point unrolling. Then we get to the merge construct. And we can not only step a merge to either one of its parts, but we can evaluate under merge in the merge rules. And we can even replace any term with a merge of its duplicate. So this might concern you. <laughs> and indeed, you should not try to run this dynamic semantics. So for example, this is a perfectly well-typed term because with the merge typing rule, I can pick out the lambda part of it, and of course I can apply that to five. But when I'm running it, I might choose to use the first stepping rule up there, and now I get zero phi to five, which of course is ill phi and doesn't step. So we don't have preservation of progress in the usual sense. We do have the theorem that every well typed E is either a value or there exists some E prime to which it steps preserving typing. So if you pick the right stepping rule, you will preserve typing. Okay. The target semantics is completely uninteresting, so it's in gray. There's nothing interesting here, it's just products and sums. There are no intersections, no unions, and no merge. And the stepping rules are exactly what you expect from any textbook. Okay, so we want to elaborate the source programs into target terms. To do this, for functions, we just Recursive of the structure of the term, body elaborates to m, therefore the lambda elaborates to lambda. For the merge, we elaborate to the thing that corresponds to the part of the merge that we typed. So if we know that E sub 1 has type A, then we elaborate to m. And we forget about whichever part of the merge was potentially ill-typed here. For intersection, we elaborate at type A1 to M1, 
at type A2 to M2, and then elaborate to the pair of M1 and M2. Remember, we want to turn intersections into products. When we eliminate the intersection, this E is going to elaborate to some M that at runtime should be a pair. Right? So we need to have an explicit projection out of it. And now we can show that if E at type A elaborates to M, then M has a type which is the same except you replaced all the intersections with products. Depending on which part of the MERS the type checker chooses, though, you still get some strange behavior. If you write three merge four at type int, then this could elaborate to either three or four. All right, they both have type int. It's sound. But this is quite undesirable because now evaluation is going to depend on whatever the type checker happened to do. And Reynolds noticed this quite a long time ago with intersection type systems and called this problem incoherence. I'll talk more about that later. We can show a kind of simulation result. So if E elaborates to M, M takes one step to M prime, then there is some E prime such that E takes zero more steps to it and there's typing and it elaborates to M prime. It's not necessarily one step. So if you reject out of the pair W1 and W2, this is going to correspond to an intersection elimination of the source, which is not explicit, so you don't need to step anything. It could also take more than two steps. So if you have a merge apply to value, this will elaborate to the lambda phi to w, which will take one step to w in the target. But the merge applied to b in the source We'll first have to pick out the part of the merge and then do the data reduction. So you move at different speeds on the right and the left. And it's not too hard once you have this and some lemmas to extend this to a multi step consistency where you evaluate in the target down to a value. Then you can show that in the source, if you pick the rules correctly, you will get some v which elaborates to W. Okay. So I'm not going to say too much about the current implementation here. Uh, so the source language has intersections and unions and a bunch of other things, some which are left over from the type refinement stage of it. You elaborate to a target program M, which is actually standard ML. <coughs> Compile that with your favorite SML compiler. Assuming that's correct, that will give you something that corresponds to running M, which should correspond to one of the evaluations of E. So here are a few applications of this. As I mentioned, you can do operator overloading. And to make that work, you just say what you want the type of plus to be, and then define plus to be a merge of the plus on ints and plus on reals. You can also code up multi-field records if all you have is single field records and merge. So a record with two fields is just the merge of a record with one field and a record with another field. You can also do a kind of simulation of dynamic typing without losing the guarantees of static typing. So I know I'm dropping the union types suddenly at the end here, but it's a cool example. We can define a type dyne to be the union, not the disjoint union, just the union, of int real and string. Then we can write a function to convert any element of type dyne to a string simply by writing merge. So we have the two string on ints, the identity function on strings, and the two string function on reals. 
Now, we iterate over the list in a completely standard way. Now, we can apply this function to a list where we do not explicitly inject into the type dime. Okay, so the intersections you have implicit projections. With unions, you have implicit injections. And you write something that looks much like what you'd write in a dynamically typed language. So I'll briefly talk about some related work. Uh, as far as I know, Benjamin Pierce, I believe this was his thesis, uh, was the first to talk about this idea of compiling or translating the intersection of the product. Forsyth was the first, he's first intended as practical language with intersection. It used a limited, coherent merge, and I'll talk in a moment about how to try to solve the incoherence problem here. You can also give a semantics directly to terms with intersection types. So then you have a, an evaluation that explicitly depends on runtime type information. This idea also came up in some work on flow types and compiler analysis. You turn intersections into virtual tuples and unions into virtual sums. But this was just for the purpose of analysis. So you don't try to run programs using these virtual tuples and virtual sums. It's just for the purpose of flow analysis. And there's been a lot of work on type refinements uh, where you generally require that you're intersecting the same kind of animal. So you can take the intersection type of two functions or two lists, but not a list and a function. So, summarize, we can try to encode various language features using intersection and union, and then elaborate them away. The elaboration produces terms that are consistent with one of the runs of the unsafe and practical dynamic semantics of the source. The current system lacks coherence. In the paper, you can find special union types, subtyping, bidirectional typing, because either way, type inference for intersection is unassignable, and implementation. So as I said, the current approach is incoherent. The merge could turn into whatever the type checker feels like. This is still sound, they're both integers, but it's very unfriendly. So the solution I'm working on is a merge that prefers the second part, which would also allow you to code up functional record update, because the second part of the merge here would override the FLD field in R if it's defined. And to make this work, I think you need a notion of type difference so you know which part of the behavior of R to leave and which part to overwrite with the second part. So, um, thank you, and you can find the paper and also the 12th development 